Put me in our hearts as we saw out of our service tonight. Amen. God is greater than my problem and greater than my fear. He is greater than my failings and faithful through the years. God is greater than the enemy and every human plan. For every word of God will always stand. God of glory, King of majesty. Our God is greater, Lord creator, God of wonders high above all things. Our God is greater. The Lord Creator, God of wonders, high above all things. He's the King of Kings. Yes, He's our King of Kings, and our Lord is Lord. Sing it out with me, Stephen. God is greater. For well, God is greater than my problem, and greater than my fear. He is greater than my failing. And faith of you, God is greater than the enemy and every human plan. Every word of God will always stand. A God of glory, King of majesty. God is greater, the Lord creator, the Lord creator, God of wonders high above all things, a vision king of kings. Yes, there's no one that can do for us what our Jesus can, and I say yes, Lord, yes, and to your will and to your way. Let's continue to clap and rejoice tonight, amen. Well, I'll say yes, Lord, yes, unto your will and to your way. And I'll say yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, unto your will and to your way. And I'll say yes, Lord, yes. I will trust you and obey. And when your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree. And my answer will be yes, Lord. One more time, I'll say yes, Lord. Yes, amen. Well, I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. And I'll say yes, Lord, yes. I will trust you and obey, and when your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree, and my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. Hallelujah. Amen. This evening, let's continue lifting our hands and our voices in praise and worship. You are my strength. My treasure, my all in all. Jesus, the lamb that was slain in our place. Amen. You know what? It should have been us. It should have been me paying the penalty for my sin. But Jesus willingly laid his life down for me. Oh, what a blessing it is. Him with all of our God. I ask you to do the same thing. You are my strength, my treasure, my all in all. Lift your hands and your voices with me this evening as we see. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I see. You are my all in all. We're seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up, I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God. Jesus, 
Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy in your name. Yes, taking my sin, my cross, my shame. Verse 2. He's taken my sin, my cross, my shame. Rising again, I bless your name. You are my all in all. And when I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your home child, Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Hallelujah. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Oh, let's give a praise together tonight. Father, we worship you. And God, we thank you tonight for your blessing, God. Thank you tonight for your help, God. We worship you and you alone, my for God in prayer as we always do. I want to believe God for God's miracle working power upon all those that are sick in body. If you have a need tonight, you can make it up to the altar. We'll pray for you. We want to pray for our nation. We want to pray for our president, his cabinet. We pray for the first responders. We pray for our fellowship as you're uh, starting, actually, the Prescott, they start the uh, conference almost on Sunday mornings because they have evangelists, or rather, uh, international workers at uh, Prescott. Uh, uh, Bible conference coming up uh, tomorrow, going all the way through this week for that. Uh, be stirred for the harvest and that God will plant churches at the end of the week. We also want to lift up our, our pastor, Pastor Spansky, uh, Pastor Lovato, uh, Pastor Mitchell, as they're there. Uh, this weekend, uh, our, our uh, harvesters and bullhead, God would bless that uh, meeting as well. I want to pray for our missionaries as they'll be traveling. Some of them will be traveling back. I believe Pastor Gunkel and his family will be, uh, his wife will be back. Uh, uh, we won't be able to get them. I told him, I said, next time you come, you got to come, got to, come to Charleston, man. Yeah. Sinful person. Bless his heart. He can't make it this time. We'll get him next time. Amen. Uh, but want to pray for him for safe trial emergencies. It's, it's a big ordeal, folks, when you come from overseas uh, back to America and then trying to get back home, home, uh, get here, and then get back home safely. want to pray also for uh, 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 Pastor Dominguez, uh, Pastor Duckett, uh, the Samuels. They're preparing to go into Indonesia. God would help them in that. I uh, want to believe God also for healing tonight. Jason King, uh, Gerard Smith for complete restoration. Uh, praying for salvation for Isaac and all of our unsaved family members, our co-workers, neighbors that are in need tonight. We pray for our loved ones, for Yanni and Sharon. People, God, we ask you, pour out your spirit upon us. God, give us favor at the job, dominion, God. I pray for promotions and bonuses in life. I ask that you would build your church that the gates of hell will not prevail against it, God. I'm asking you, add on that the same souls, God, cause us to bear fruit, to, that our fruit will remain. God, we thank you in advance for your miracle working power. We we'll ask your favor and your dominion tonight as we minister in this place tonight in Jesus' name. Father, God, we thank you for your love, your forgiveness, your faithfulness to us, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for this time, Lord God, that you set aside for us, Lord God, to come before you, Lord God. Many needs upon our hearts in this place, Lord God. You know us, Lord God. You know them the needs upon our hearts, oh God, we lift them up to you, Lord God. Those, Lord God, that need for God's salvation, those, Lord God, just need a touch from you, Lord God, comfort, Lord God, love, Lord God, and just your hand upon their lives, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that you would bring, Lord God, comfort, bring, Lord God, salvation, Lord, to the lost, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for those sick and body, Lord God, that you would touch them, Lord God, that you would bring forth healing and restoration to their bodies, Lord God. We 
lift up, Lord God, those loved ones, Lord God, that just need your touch. Yes. Help us, Lord God, in this service, Lord God. Many needs upon our hearts, Lord God, for ourselves, Lord God. We just pray that you would touch every need in this place, Lord God, and that you would fill our hearts, Lord God, with the desire to love you more and more every day, Lord God. Fill our hearts, speak to our hearts, Lord God, a word that will forever change us, Lord God. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Holy. God bless you tonight. Welcome to church. Turn around, reach your neighbor. Hello, baby. Hello, baby. Hello, baby. How are you? You ready? But at least you don't have to go there and work and then come back and then go back again. So. Uh, yeah. Somewhat. Hello, hello, hello. I don't want to. You know I don't want to. Hallelujah. Good evening, church. Glory to God. Good to see you tonight. Welcome to our Sunday night service. We want to go over a couple of quick things to, uh, to remind you of. Uh, we'll meet here together uh, Tuesday night. Amen. We'll meet together here at uh, 7. We'll go outreach, hand out some flyers for our church service on Wednesday night here at the church at 6 o'clock is our prayer meeting. 7 o'clock evening service begins. Uh, this uh, week, uh, the uh, Prescott Bible Conference starts. Uh, uh, we are three hours ahead. So their six o'clock is our nine o'clock. So just uh, keep that in mind. If you can hang, you, I used to be able to hoop with the owls. Uh, uh, I used to. <laughs> Especially with it being hot, so hot as it is, I've been I've been working out in the elements. It's been killing me. I was supposed to. Uh, my brother Archie was supposed to call me. Uh, I was so I was so far in another time. I was in another time zone. My brother called me. Uh, it was only six o'clock or something when he called. I was out, man, drained completely. But uh, 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 so that's just uh, we're three hours ahead. So just keep that in mind. You can during the during the days you can catch the uh, uh, the seminars and stuff. It'd be a great blessing for you, uh, as I'll be catching some of them as best as I can during the week. Uh, the uh, uh, Saturday uh, outreach at four o'clock is our prayer. Four o'clock prayer meeting. Five o'clock outreach. Go we'll outreach uh, for our church service, which will be Sunday morning. Our Sunday school, ten o'clock. Uh, uh, then our eleven o'clock, our, our morning worship begins. Amen. Next week, our team boot camp. Amen. Coming right up. So uh, make sure you got everything in place. Amen. Uh, uh, I'll be going. Uh, actually, actually, next Saturday I have to go and do some work. Uh, pick up where I left off last year. Amen. I actually, got to fix some stuff. That, uh, so if I got any volunteers want to help me. It's okay. It's it, it'll it'll be fine. Glory to God. But uh, so that'll be next our next so next Monday. I'll get I'll get all I'll go over all that information for you uh next Sunday. And uh if you have any questions as usual, anything you need, uh, uh please let me know. Get with me, I can share with you all the information. Amen. We're gonna take an offering tonight, amen. As we always do as a part of our worship, we give to the house of the Lord. Tithe, the offering, the pledges beside. Let's be faithful in our giving tonight. Amen. Let's have our ushers come and let's give God praise together as they come tonight. Amen. Father, we worship you tonight, God, and we thank you for the privilege it is to give your kingdom to bless this time of offering, this time of giving that we can do to your church. In Jesus' name. Let's be faithful tonight. Amen. Let's bow our hearts. Aren't you blessed the offering as we give? Father God, we thank you for your faithfulness, Father, bringing increase into our hands, touching our bodies with strength, God. Touch our hearts with liberality. Give us a passion and a vision to give. Bless this offering in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Holly, give with me tonight. Let's sing it out. Amen. It's the blood. It's the blood that sets me free. It's the blood that sets me free. It's the blood, it's the blood, it's the blood of the land, it's the blood that sets me free. It's the blood that sets me free. 
It's the blood that sets me free. It's the blood, it's the blood, it's the blood of the Lamb. The blood that sets me free. Amen. Thank you, Tamara. Appreciate you tonight. Amen. Turn your Bible with me to 2 Chronicles chapter 17 tonight. 2 Chronicles 17. I bring greetings from a brethren in Myrtle Beach. They send their hello uh, to you guys. I was able to go this morning and minister there. Uh, I was going to preach the same sermon, but I said, no, nah, uh, give you something fresh. Amen. It's something that I preached before as well, but something a little different tonight. Amen. I want to talk about Asa's son. You can tell, amen, a father was a good father by the way his son asks, acts. You can also tell if a father's a bad father by the way his son acts. <laughs> Not always the case. How many know our children learn from us? They see us, amen, at our peak, and they see us at our valley's low. So we have to watch, amen, the way we live our lives. I want to ask you tonight, how are you living your life? And what happens in the course of our lives is a lot of times, some of us, we've been raised in all kinds of sin, all kinds of stuff that we don't want to repeat. And uh, it affects us. And as sometimes in life, even my wife, she tells me, you know what, you do that because of the way you were raised. And and, and I have to, you know, agree with her. We grew up in poverty. We grew up not having a lot of things. And we grew up, amen, uh, uh, in a life of uh, drugs and alcohol, addictions and bondages that we had in our lives, amen, because of the lack thereof of a father in my particular situation. Yeah. And so a lot of the things that I learned, I learned in the streets or so I say in the streets. And how many know you don't learn anything good out in the streets? Can't even say it right. <laughs> but you know what? When I got saved, what happened is, is that God engrafted me into a new family. And I had a father God in heaven who had all the issues that I was going and I was involved and he had them all covered. And I could begin to start doing something good now. Could begin to something pattern in my life now after a pattern of blessing. The way I was going, I, I, it's a miracle I'm still alive. And God spared me, amen, for the purpose so that he can say, you're a testimony to whosoever. Your life makes a difference in those who know you now and who will come beyond uh, after you your destiny beloved i'm not just talking to men i'm talking to you ladies some of you ladies have got a powerful testimony what a joy it is to know you know especially you know you've been saved for a little bit of, of time you've been through some mountains and some valleys hallelujah and you stayed the course. And you've been faithful, amen, to, 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 to do what was right. And then, amen, in your life, amen, makes a difference to those who are around you that are struggling. You bring such courage to them that if sister so-and-so couldn't make it all, I thank God uh, for our sister in Myrtle Beach. And then faithful as all get out, been serving God. And I remember just seeing her. And then she used to be young. Now she's a little older. Amen. Uh, there's no shame in that. And she's not out trying to, 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 to do the latest YouTube trend or TikTok trend. Amen. Hallelujah. She's been faithful. Her life speaks volumes. Volumes. No doubt. There's many, many people, amen, in our fellowship that you can reference. Every one of us can reference officers. Hey, look, I want, ooh, I remember first time, amen. Oh. Brother Jeff Williams, <laughs> it spared, it saved me from sure destruction time and time again. So I was not a good dude that first. God's helping me. I'm still working on it. 
You know, but I'm just so grateful to have men in my life that I could reference off and say, you know what, I'm going to do this is what my brother Jeff told me. This is what Sean Duckett told me. This is what uh, uh, Art Crow told me. This is what 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 uh, uh, Dave Suspensky, my pastor, is, uh, and rebuked me about several times that they didn't listen to the first time or the second time or the third time. I had to get a little stern with me about loving my wife. Yes, sir, Pastor. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Hey, don't tell me sorry. He got indignant with me one time. Don't tell me sorry. Go tell your wife. <laughs> Sorry. And I didn't take that personal like he was attacking me. Like people do nowadays. Then can you try to try to correct somebody? Oh, how dare you? No, I'm trying to help you. I took it and I took it. I said, you know what? This man prays for me. This man lifts me up before the throne of God for God's help and direction in my life daily. He's not trying to hurt me, he's trying to help me. Trying to save my marriage, trying to save my life. So I begin to start patterning my life after my pastor. Perry Dominguez, another one. <laughs> good men, good examples that God has given me in my life to pattern my life after. And I can only, and I say this with all humility, I can only hope to God. That I can have my life can have impact in somebody coming up. Somebody behind us, some young person, some young man, some young woman, amen, uh, that, that, that watches me and sees my example and say, oh, I want to pattern my life after Pastor Francis. But that's only going to be made possible if I keep doing what I need to do. If I keep sacrificing for God, if I keep uh, obeying the word of God, and the word of God has a lot to play, a lot to do with it. Because how many know in our society, everything is always changing. You know why? You know why all of these here celebrities and stars, they always go with, off into drugs and stuff? Because at one time, they were a thing. And then some other little tramp, I mean, a little uh, comes along. Sorry, I didn't mean to say that. Some other person comes along and takes them out of their number one spot. And now they're going to perish because nobody's looking at them anymore. They're not important. You know why it's so important for you and I to stay the same? It's because you are always important in God. Oh, come on, somebody. Listen, in God's kingdom, you are important. Your life makes a difference. No matter who comes behind you, they're just proof of what you're doing is right. In our Bible, amen, it's in 2 Chronicles, let's read the story of Asa's son, Jehoshaphat. Starting in verse 1, 2 Chronicles 17, verses 1 through 13. I'll try to get through this without butchering the, the, the names too bad. I'll live. Then Jehoshaphat, his son, reigned in his place and strengthened himself against Israel. And he placed troops in all the fortified cities of Judah and set garrisons in the land of Judah and in the cities of Ephraim which Asa, his father, had taken. And the Lord was with Jehoshaphat because he walked in the former ways of his father, David, and he did seek it. He did not seek the Baals, but sought the God of his father and walked in his commandments and not according to the acts of Israel. At this particular time, Israel was serving the Baals. They had, you know, sometimes they're, hey, we're we going to serve God. And then, oh, I'm going to serve this pole again. I want to go back to the pole. So this is one of those times where they were going to the pole. And Asa becomes, I mean, uh, Jehoshaphat became king. He said, no, 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 no more poles. We're getting rid of all this stuff. We're going to worship the true God. Let me pick up where I left off. Amen. Because he walked in the former ways of his father, David, and did not seek the Baals, but sought the God of his father and walked in his commandments and not according to the acts of Israel. Therefore, the Lord established the kingdom in his hand and all Judah gave presents to Jehoshaphat and he had riches and honor and abundance. And his heart took delight in the ways of the Lord. Moreover, 
He removed the high places and wooden images uh, from Judah. Also in the third year of his reign, he sent his leaders of ben Hel, Obadiah, Zechariah, Nathaniel, uh, uh, Michael, Michael, Micaiah, the, and to teach in the cities of Judah. These are all these uh, anointed men of God. He sent them to stop proclaiming what is right. He began to start. These men, they went into this uh, uh, sinful place where these Israel was off the chain back then. And so the, he said, you know, we're going to establish God now. You know what? Y'all was serving these bells. And no more. This is what we're going to do. Thus says the Lord. And he began to, they began to go throughout the land and begin to proclaim God's word. And what happened is, is that God couldn't help but pour out his blessing upon his people again. What a joy that is to proclaim the goodness of God. And so when uh, they had sent Levi's, uh, Shemaiah, Nathaniel, Zebediah, Ashiel, bless my heart, these were these names, y'all. Shemarai Amoth, Jehonathan, Adonijah, Tobijah, Tobadonijah, the Levites, and with them Elishama and Jehoram, the priests. So they taught in Judah and had the book of the law of the Lord with them. They went throughout all the cities of Judah and taught the people. And the fear of the Lord fell on all the kingdoms of the land that were around Judah, so that they did not make war against Jehoshaphat. Also, some of the Philistines brought Jehoshaphat's presence. These are the enemies of God. They begin to bring a presence. Oh, man, y'all, y'all are storing things back the way they're supposed to be. Here, here's a blessing from the Lord. How many of God can use sinners to bless the kingdom of God? And some of the Philistines brought Jehoshaphat presents and silvers as tribute. The, the Arabians brought him flocks, 7,700 7, rams and 7,700 male goats. So Jehoshaphat became increasingly powerful and he built a fortress and storage cities in Judah. He had much property in the cities of Judah and the men of war, mighty men of valor, were in Jerusalem. So what happened is, is that he did not follow what his father was doing. This is very important, folks, especially if your father was not a Christian. Most of the time, we pattern our lives after the people who we grow up with. And some of the stuff, amen, that I had to endure in the very beginning of my salvation was because that's how I was raised. And I may ever said that because, well, that's how we was raised. Well, can I tell you, sometimes the way we were raised was wrong. Amen. Can you agree with me tonight? Yes. And so what we have to do is we have to not follow. It's insanity to do the same thing over again and expect different results, especially if it's something bad. You hear people say, well, in my family, we've always had drunks in our family. In my family, we've always had crackheads in my family. In my family, we've always had thieves in my family. No, you don't have to pattern your life after a thief, after a drug addiction a, a addict, an alcoholic. You don't have to do that. You can be set free when you pattern your life after God's word. Hallelujah. That brings me hope. But there's some folks, amen, that I tried to be like when I was a kid. And I sure am glad that I didn't succeed. Huh? Yeah. I wouldn't be here. There's some people who I looked up to. I'm trying to be nice. They're just rotten. They're just rotten people. Yeah. And at the time, as a kid, you don't know, they're just... Somebody adult, adult figure in your life. Oh, yeah, I want to be like. Then you find out that they're abusive, that they're addictions, uh, uh, they're immoral, uh, 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 they're perverted. Uh, you know, and, and the list goes on. I wanted to be like, yeah, that's what I wanted to be like. I didn't know. 
And so when I got saved, what happened is we go, well, I, you know, I don't remember so-and-so, they were doing this, and so I would just do this. Everybody, anybody ever got a Holy Ghost buzzer before? <laughs> hey, girl, you're about to do something wrong, and you be like, oh, where'd that come from? God, we're trying his best to help his people. You know what? Because we can get away with stuff. A lot of times we do stuff after the buzzer sounds. Live to regret it. Now well, I'm talking from experience, folks. Then you wish, oh man, I wish I hadn't. Then, see, that's when the condemnation comes because you start beating yourself up. Well, I should have known better. I shouldn't have. Done. Listen, stop. You're giving the devil fuel. We don't need to give him nothing. We need to give him, well, I got some stuff I'd like to give him, but I can't say it. We'll talk about him when we see him. The Bible says one day we're going to look at him like, you? You realize that when we get to heaven, God's going to, you know, bring it to the path to pass so that you and I, we get to see the Satan, the devil himself. And we're like, this is the one? I can't wait to that day. I'm, I might break ranks. Huh? I'm... All these years. Ooh, ooh. You mess with, ooh. Just don't show me, Lord, please. Just don't let me see him. Don't let me see him, Lord. But you know what, amen. We've helped the devil. A lot of times we've helped him. He didn't have to do anything. We, he just, like a fish on the hook, just set the bait out there. Just, <laughs> but you know what? They meant our, our direction in life depends on who and what we listen to. There's been people who have, uh, I had a school teacher because I was such a bad kid. He told me, Eric, you would never amount to anything. So, I ain't going to mount nothing. Don't just be bad. Be careful what you say to a young person. Some of the words that I've heard that were pounded in my head were so negative, I couldn't help but live that out. Thank God for salvation, folks. I'm telling you, it works a miracle. I am a victorious man of God now. Who would have ever thought? I was not, I've got to show y'all my yearbook. I was not uh, written most likely to succeed in my yearbook. My junior high or my high school yearbook. No, 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 neither one of them. But thank God. Look what God can do with anyone who's just willing to just trust him. Just put God first. In our scripture, Jehoshaphat makes a deliberate choice to not line up with the certain things that the world at the time said was acceptable. <clears throat> It'd be the same thing as you and I. We make a stand against a, a, a drinking. You're a Christian, you say you don't drink. Period. That's easy. The Bible says. We make a stand against a, 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 this a gender a, a confusion that, that's going on. You know why it's confusion? Who is the author of confusion? Oh, Satan, the author of confusion. It's pretty simple. And it is so profound, yet people are always give it to I don't do what I want to do. Okay. Jehoshaphat said, No, I'm not giving in to that. As a matter of fact, we're going to get rid of all this ungodly stuff and we're going back to where we need to be. And sometimes you have to consider your heart tonight, amen? What's inside there? What, are you, what have you allowed in there? What compromise have you allowed in there that caused you to say, oh, it's okay. Oh, just one won't hurt. Just one, that's all it takes. Just one look. Just one touch. Just one kiss. It's all it takes. Just one puff. Just yep. one drink. And I just said, nobody ever get, I ain't gonna hurt nobody. 
The next thing you know, you're bound. The Jehoshaphat, he says, I am going to line up with the right thing. I am going to show a pattern of blessing for those after me. So let's choose reference points tonight that are good reference points. Every person has a reference point in life, in your relationship. So uh, whether it be uh, a life-changing moment, how many of us remember the, the day we got saved? What a life-changing day. What a blessing that day was. I never forget it. It's a reference point. A reference point is something that we line up with. We imitate deliberately. We are influenced by impartation. So many times we can have also a negative reference point in life. If something bad has happened to us. And that helps us too because you know if I do this, this is what happens. And how I many know you can learn also from other people's bad reference points to save you from the headache? And this is what Jehoshaphat is doing. He's learning from his father's bad reference points. His father didn't trust the Lord. His father got angry at a, a correction. How many of us have ever got mad? Our boss told us to do something. I ain't doing that. You don't know who I am. I'm Eric. Okay. Go down to the unemployment office, Eric. <laughs> we have people in our lives, amen, sometimes that show us what not to do. We also have people in our lives. And then now, being saved, man, we got a whole fellowship of, of people in our lives that show us how to do this thing. And I'm talking about this life that we begin to start living in Christ. What happens is it has many, many benefits. Joy, victory, helps. It's wonderful to know that there's people outside of this church that are praying for me. Thank God. Do you realize that there's people outside this church praying for you? Ain't that wonderful? Amen. Oh, that's, I thought that was good, man. I'm like, hallelujah, because I sure need it. If I was left to myself, folks, I'm telling you, it'd be a bad situation. Some of us have been abandoned. Some of us suffer through divorce, or some of them suffer through anger, <laughs> the, the addictions, the carnality, rebellion, you name it. We see many people have fallen uh, off the edge of the cliff, amen, to sin uh, because they did not uh, look for the proper references in life to pattern their lives after. It's unfortunate that there's lots and lots of folks, amen, uh, who we know that you look at their lives now. I was just considering as a brother, and I can't say a thing. But there's a brother. He left the church chasing after money. Took his wife. And, and, and uh, he's no longer married. All for money. You know what? You never have enough money, folks. It's never enough. So don't make that the focus of life. Amen. Because what we've been given is eternal life. It will stay the course. Remember the lady, I was just reading a story. The lady, she was running the marathon the other day. <laughs> she got off course. And she was leading at first. She was winning. And then she ran the wrong way. And what happened is, oh, I made the wrong <laughs> turn. And then she turned back. And that wrong turn cost her dearly. Something like cost her seven grand. Because she was following the wrong reference point. In 2 Kings 23, verses 32. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his fathers had done. This is a common, I found this, I should have, I should have counted how many times that it says this in the in the Bible here. But if you read through the, the Kings and the, and the Chronicles, you hear that you see this statement. It's said several times. 
And this king died, and then his son became the king. And it says, and he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father did. Because he had a bad reference. Even in the very beginning, remember Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they did some, <laughs> they made some bad choices. They all caused some problems in their relationships. You see, following the bad examples, it just doesn't make sense. There was a story of the air fire, the, the pilot that was, they were doing some maneuver and they were flying into the ground, all well, four of them, one right after the other. That's what happens when you follow bad examples. Nose dive, crash. If somebody suffers from a mistake, why do we want to repeat that? It can be a spiritual issue. We, 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 we can, if we're not careful, we can become the very same thing that we despise. But we have to make, we have to like Jehovah. He made a decision. You know what? No, I'm not going to follow the steps that my father took. I'm not going to be like his. I'm not going to follow his example. I'm going to serve God. I'm going to go back to the scriptures. He's going to choose the correct reference points. So, Number one, he rejected, amen, the negative reference point. So, 2 Chronicles 17, 3 and 4, the Lord was with Jehoshaphat because he walked in the first way of his father David and sought and sought not to Baal, for he sought, and I said a second time, sought to, to the Lord God of his fathers and walked in his commandments and not after the doings of Israel. What he was doing is he was rejecting the idolatry of that day. He was rejecting the sinful disobedience of his even his own father. He said, I'm not going to, to, to do this, amen, because of see what happened to my father. See the example that he laid. See what he did. I don't want that to be my end. You can say that too. You may have a, grew up in a home where parents abandoned you and, 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 and there was lots and lots of discord and, and problems and stuff. And, and you say, well, I, I can't wait till I get 18. I'm getting out of this place. And then you got out of this place and you found out, well, it wasn't so bad at home. Anybody besides me? Yeah, I wish I would go back home. No bills, no problem. But you know what? In the, in the moment, I mean, we see, amen, bad choices that our parents have made. We don't have to duplicate that. We can say, no, I am going to do right by God because uh, he promises blessings. I'm not going after the carnal mind. I'm not going to chase after money. No, I'm going to put God first. Uh, and God blesses uh, uh, everything that we do when we put him first. Sometimes you got to break that curse that's been plagued in people's lives. Oh, every, all the, the, I never forget. I never forget the one guy I was witnessing to at the job. He said, "Yeah, all, all the men in my family, and they're they're all a, a, a bunch of players." This is coming from a pastor's son. So your father's and your, your, your grandfather, yeah, they're both pastors. They both got different women. So what about you? I answer, so, so what about you? You're going to follow that pattern? You see where it's gotten them? You're going to do the very same thing? Or are you going to do right by God? Which one? We're going to break that family curse. Remember in Jabez, 1 Chronicles 4, verse 10. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you will bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. That involved him just simply saying a prayer. You know how powerful your prayers are? Do you realize how powerful your prayers are? It's no wonder why there's a struggle to get to prayer. Yes. There's no wonder why it's hard to, to, to be faithful to prayer. You know, one of the blessings that I get to do is I get to in the mornings. I got the keys. I can come in the morning and pray before I go to work. Because I'm mean, I need Jesus. You need Jesus. <laughs> you better get him involved. You better pray. Let 
I don't want my past to determine my future, my bad past. God has restored my past, amen, since the salvation. And I made a deliberate choice to start following the good examples. Verse 3, he walked in the first way of his father, David. And then the Bible says in verse 4, now the Lord was with Jehoshaphat, but Jehosh Jehoshaphat because he walked in the former ways of his father David and did not seek the bells, but sought. Uh, once again, sought. You know what? We, uh, that was the name of our band, sought out. Uh, 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 he sought God, the God of his father, and walked in his commandment, and not according to the acts of Israel. And that word sought means that identifying who is good and what is good and deliberately imitating it. When you seek something, when you find it, amen, you know that it's good, and when you, you grab hold of it and you live your life by God's word. Third John 1 verse 11, Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth good is of God, but he that doeth evil have not seen God. 6 verse 12, that you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. You know why you guys are so blessed? Because you're following God's word. That's simple, right? You've got good reference points. You've made a decision. I'm going to seek God now in my life. Like I said, sought. They meant a direction. Uh, uh, it's a direction word. We are deliberately aiming at God. Areas of our life when you are unsure, because there's going to be times where you're not going to know what to do and how to do it. You better consider the God that you serve and look to him and his word for direction. And then not only do you have to look and seek and find God's word for your particular situation, then you have to obey it. I know that's kind of heavy revelation there. Sometimes you know what well, God will tell you to do this and, and you might not want to do this but it's God's word. You have to know that. God speaks to you. God gives us his word. Amen. And as you read it, a lot of times, it's going to rub you wrong. I've said a lot of times. I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb. All the time, God's word is going to rub you wrong. Why? Because we have that thing in us, that sinful nature there. And does not want to do right all the time. I had a brother tell me he was at work, and, and then him and another brother, they went to lunch, and, and they're at lunch, and, and uh, uh, they used to go to this spot every day because, you, know, you know, sometimes you get in areas where there's only one place to go for lunch. So these guys, they go into this place for lunch. They're there every day. They're working at this particular site uh, for about a month. And so they go in, and this, this, this waitress, she's got her eyes so my brother. You know, he's a married man. They're both married men, saved, living for God. And they're just having fun. You know, sometimes we cut up a little bit too much sometimes at restaurants. But anyway, so here they are. And, and the, 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 the waitress comes and she asks him, so and so, are you married all the time? Oh, he's like, check, please. You got a pot of it. Run for your life. What does the Bible say? <laughs> Right? Happy birthday. Yeah. Happy birthday? No, not, not, not happy birthday today. A couple, couple weeks. He's got a birthday coming up. That's, he's excited. So bless his heart. But uh, <laughs> are you married all the time? I know a guy laughed. That was funny. But because my brother had some common sense, they got up and they never would. They started bringing in lunch. <laughs> After lunch, man, peanut butter and jelly for sure. <laughs> So God's word will cause you, amen, to start changing. That's what I'm saying. It's like, you got to change. If you know that there's sin, why go? Stay away. Run for your life. What the Bible say? Joseph ran 
He's just trying to do, trying his best to do what he's supposed to do. Some old person. Lie with me. No, get off me. You next to you. Give me, my, give me my jacket back. But you have to obey God's word. It's going to cause you, amen, to have to make a stand. Sometimes you may have to hurt some people. My brother, he said, no, I'd rather hurt that lady than hurt my wife. I don't care how she feels because I ain't going home and sleep with her. I'm going home to my wife. He identified, amen, that he was uh, uh, in a relationship that was uh, priceless. And not only just his relationship with his wife. Well, I'm not just talking about that. I'm talking about his relationship with God. And he said, God, you're priority number one. If there's an opportunity for me to sin, I'm going to run from it. You know, sometimes you ladies get an opportunity to sin when you go stop it. Oh, I just wish I had some friends here tonight. They'll hear what I said. It's an opportunity to see it. You know, every time, everything you on the clearance rack, you don't need it. <laughs> everything at the, the store, you don't need to have it. You can live without it. You're going to be okay. You don't need it. These <laughs> don't, don't don't have the lights on because you you look good, but you, 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 you <laughs> the lights ain't on, but you. Where's the money? Target. <laughs> Wherever your favorite store is. And it's a personal responsibility, folks, is what I'm saying. It's more than just a duty. I have to. The Bible says Jehoshaphat, he took delight in God and in the ways of the Lord. And that's something that you should not, you and I should do. It's a delight. In God, do you realize that God loves you more than you love yourself? How many of you, be honest with me, how many of you love you? <laughs> Two of us, three of us, okay, four, okay. Of course you love yourself. It's evident you love yourself by the way you look. You wouldn't come out, you know. No, you know, you're going to look in the mirror. Not bad. Not, not, not bad. Yeah, I need a shade, but nobody will know. You'll come out looking good. You know, some of us said, shh, shh. French. They walk in the room. French. <laughs> you love yourself. There's nothing wrong with looking good, nothing wrong with smelling good. That's what I'm saying. Because you delight in yourself. Just consider now. Oh, come on, somebody. Just consider how much God delights in you. Just to, just, how, just consider how much God delights in seeing you smile. Oh, come on, somebody. Just, just consider how much God delights when you and I are doing the right thing. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to keep on moving. Well, let's, let's see what the Bible says. Psalms 37, verse 4. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. I want God to bless my heart. You know, I say that all the time, bless your heart. You know what? You want God to bless your heart. He says in the word, that's where we get it from. I don't know where everybody else gets from. This is where I get it from. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he will give thee the desires of thy heart. That means he will bless your heart. Oh, anyway, let's keep right on moving. Second Chronicles 17, verse 6. And his heart took delight in the ways of the Lord. Delight. Once again, there's that word. A high degree of pleasure or enjoyment. Something that gives great pleasure. When you take good, great pleasure in the Lord, you can't help but be blessed. It's an internal indicator of what's going on on the inside. Sometimes you get a little dry, man. Can I tell you, when you get dry, the best thing you can do is start getting in the Word of God. Delight yourself in God's Word. God always wants to help 
his people. James 4, verse 7 and 8. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you, you double-minded. See, Jehoshaphat made the word of God a priority. And God, uh, not only did he bless him, but he caused sinners to bless him. He caused the enemy to bless him. So when you're faithful to a decision, a situation in life that might be a little difficult, can I encourage you to focus in on the word of God? See what God's got to say about your situation. See what God's got to say about your circumstance. And I guarantee you, you will never be disappointed. Line up with God's word, with faith, with encouragement. So I hang around some folks, and man, that'll encourage you. So I hang around with people that's always griping and complaining. You know somebody that's always griping and complaining never has nothing good to say? I know that's a revelation right there, but. No wonder why you feel down. You start hanging around with somebody. Else. Well, you know, time is hard out here. I had to, I had to stop hanging around some people in my church because they was always telling me that. Man, Pastor, you don't know. It's hard out here. Well, get out of there. Get in the kingdom of God. Man, Pastor, you don't know. Thank God I don't know. I don't want to know. I can tell you what I know, what God is doing. He's trying to help us. He's trying to be a blessing to us. He says in 2 Chronicles 17, 5, Therefore the Lord established the kingdom in his hand, and all Judah gave presents to Jehoshaphat, and he had riches and honor in abundance. How many want riches and honor in abundance? Now, I'm not saying that you, you, you do this and this God is going to you know, give you a bunch of stuff. You know why God doesn't give us a bunch of stuff sometimes? Because he knows that we're. Yeah. I'm trying to be nice here. We're capable of some incredible things. But I'm telling you, when Jehoshaphat, he made a choice. He said, you know what? I'm going to put God first. His word is priority. God established his kingdom. 25 years, I believe, 25 years. He was the most uh, godly and most uh, profitable king at that time. He had influence with people. I wonder how much. Influence with people has been lost over the course of the years of salvation uh, of, of, of the church, rather, uh, because people don't obey God's word. Because people don't put God first, they, they make choices, uh, uh, emotionally driven choices. I'm going to do this because I feel like it. Well, not knowing. That now you've made a, an open door for somebody to say, well, they said this was what they wanted to do. So now I'm going to do this. I just, I'm, like I said earlier, I just hope to God that I don't have somebody say, well, Pastor Francis did that. So I'm going to do this. And it have to do with sin. God, help me. God, keep me in your will. Oh, God, keep me. Just even saying it is horrible. But you know what? God gives us the ability to stand for what is right. He gives us the uh, uh, confidence that we need to say, you know, I don't know. I'm just simply going to trust God. And can I tell you, there's been times in my life when I got off track. And I had to get back on track. Amen. And thank God he had us helped me and restored me. That's restoration for those whosoever may go off track. Just like our runner. Amen. She was running. She got off track. She followed the wrong person. She actually, I ain't going to tell you who she was following. That's another story. And so then she realized that she was wrong. And then she was lost. To, yeah, she was in first place. And then she got back on track and was able to still make it third place. Y'all didn't hear me, did you? 
She got off the track, was in first place, was doing right by God, was loving the Lord, God was priority, got off track, realized she was wrong, repented, got back on track, and to receive a prize. I wonder how many people we know that have got off track and just kept on going the wrong direction. Still to this day, going the wrong direction. All they had to do was turn back. Get a reward. That's how good God is. He still rewards us when we go off track and get, but as long as we get it right. That's the key. Getting it right. Can I ask you that? Oh, will you get it right? Oh, will you get it right? It's nothing more important than you and I finding the will of God, pursuing it we always have, and being an example to someone else behind us, someone else next to us, whoever. Your life makes a difference. You have impact in this world that we live in. By the way you live your life, who you dictate, who you allow to, to influence you makes the difference. And beloved, we've got the best uh, uh, guide, uh, the best reference point that, that anybody could have, God's word. Let's be God's people. Let's be the example to the world, this lost and dying world, so that we can see God use us in these last days. Amen. Let's bow our hearts tonight. Thank God for what he's done, and what he's going to do. Before we go, I want to give a call tonight. Amen. You're here tonight. You're not saved. You're not right with God. Maybe you got off course, you were saved, you were running a race of faith, and what happened is, is you started following the wrong crowd and got yourself a loss, and, and now listen, you can make a U-turn as well, man, and be able to re be restored by God tonight. You're just a prayer way. Tonight, you're here, you're not saved, or you're backslidden, and you want to pray a prayer of repentance, we'd love to pray for you, and all we ask you to do is just simply raise your hand. Say, here's my hand, Pastor, I need to get saved, I need to get right with God. I'm backslidden tonight, but I don't want to be this way anymore. I want to get right with God. I want to get back on course. I want to receive my prize. That's you tonight. Would you simply raise your hand before we go? Hallelujah. Very well. And you know what, church? We have this, this thing that we have. It's called a testimony. And I want to ask you, how is your testimony? Not just here at church, but outside these four walls. When you're at work, people know that you're a Christian. Or when we're at work, do you laugh at their foul, perverted jokes? Do you make a stand when the opportunity is presented to you? Do you help people? Do you show them what the Bible says of how to live their life? Because you can and you should. Because that's what God's called us to. He's called us into Preach the gospel to every creature. But there's places that you are in your daily walk, amen, with Christ that there's people that you come in contact with that I would never be able to come in contact with. I can't reach them. You can, though. You can be a blessing to these folks. You can help them get off of the road that they're on that's headed to destruction, surely destruction. You get them on a path that, that leads to eternal life. By your testimony, by the way you live, by your exampleship. I just want to encourage you tonight, amen. We have got the greatest example in Jesus, but we've also got a fellowship full of faithful men who have stood the test of time. Some of them, get, I wouldn't want to have some of the trials that Pastor Mitchell had to go through. Wouldn't want to. Pastor Campbell, Pastor uh, 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 Foley, Pastor uh, 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 Warner, he's a, he's a, Pastor Ruby, he's a man, uh, Pastor Suspansky, some of the stuff Pastor Suspansky went through, I'm telling you, I would never want to go through, but he went through it without falling to temptation without giving in to sin and selfishness. He was more concerned about the example that he left for me than he was about his personal feelings. There was a time Pastor Suspense, he was he could have he could have let a two by ten fall and hit me right in my head. Do you know what he did? He fell. He grabbed hold of the two by ten and grabbed it 
and fell with the tube on tin and pushed me out of the way. Broke his leg, broke his foot. Because he loved me. Want the best for me. Oh God, I wish to God that I I wish to God that my life would make impact in people's lives the way he's made in mine. Same thing you can do, beloved. You can have impact in people around you. Your kids, your grandkids, your family members, cousins, aunts, uncles. I mean, you can have such impact in their lives if you just simply obey God's word. I encourage you, be that man, be that one, that, that one that makes a stand. Everybody else is falling and bowing down to the things of this world. You be the one to stand up for righteousness and says, no, thus says the Lord. And watch how God pours out blessings upon your life. Amen. I want to open the altar tonight. Maybe God has spoken to you. I just ask you to just take a few moments to pray with me. Amen. The altar's open tonight. You can come. Amen. Father, we love you. Father, we love you. Father, we thank you. God, I worship you right now. I'm believing you for me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your strength. God, we've been able to be overcomers because of what you've done for us on the cross. God, we break the chains that have held our city, God, our, our families, God, are bound for decades. We come against it right now. Oh, Father, you've given us the Authority to stand up for all of righteousness, to stand up for what is right, to not have to be afraid, or not have to be intimidated by what people have said or what people have done. We are faithful to you as you've been faithful to us, oh God. Thank you. Father, I believe in you, God. Help our lives to make an impact in this nation, in this city, God. Oh, we desperately need your help. God, nothing that we do is because uh, we want credit. Nothing that we do is because we want to be uh, noticed, God. We do what we do because uh, you've been so good to us. We appreciate that. God, we want our lives to make impact uh, in the community. We want our lives to make impact in our homes, God, in our only jobs, God. Help us, God, that you would give us dominion. God, we cast down fear torment every lie every assault every word spoken against your people right now now we plead the blood of jesus cover us the blood of jesus covers us and sets us free now we thank you for your protection now we believe you now we trust you God, we're asking you tonight, God, move and minister for you in our hearts and our lives. Thank you, God, for all that you do for me. You are awesome in this place, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you for our Thank you for our God. Thank you for Pastor Mitchell, God. Give him we leadership skills beyond his years, God. I pray. Thank you. God, Pastor Jesse, God, bless his ministry. God, thank you. Even when Pastor God suspends me for the God, cast your hands around them and protect them, God. I bless them. Thank you, God, for Pastor Lot on his leadership. Your blessing upon his life, his family, his boys, God. Move upon them fresh, God. I thank you in advance for our fellowship, God. All of these men, I thank you for Pastor Dominguez, God, and Jones. I told them they were protected. God, I thank you for Sean, our seed, the duckets, God. God, move upon them afresh, even tonight, God. Catch James around them and protect them. God, I thank you, God. Pastor Gunkle, God. Allison, God, help them and bless them and prove the lesson among us. God, I thank you right now, God, that you would move upon all of our men. God, I thank you for Art. I thank you for Joe. I thank you for Wally. God, I thank you for Elmer. God, I thank you. God, uh, for these men, uh, Pastor King, God, please, God, move upon them afresh, God, even right now. Your blessing upon their lives, God, their faithfulness over the course of our salvation. Thank you for these men, for their labors, for their sacrifices. And I ask that you would help us, God, to continue to keep the focus the focus. Continue to help us to keep uh, the, the first things first, God. Your will. 
Father God, let it be done. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Why don't we give God praise together this night? Father, we worship you tonight. God. We thank you tonight for your many blessings, God, upon our life, God. We worship you and you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we love you, my God. Hallelujah. Let's go with victory and praise together tonight. Amen. Let's uh, uh, watch over each other. Please, please drink plenty of fluids. You're out in this year, elements. These next week is going to be hot. Uh, please hydrate yourself. Uh, the night before, preferably, but during the day as well. So just keep yourself hydrated. It's going to be hot. Uh, let's bow our heads. We'll close out the prayer. Amen. Uh, uh, Archie, close it out. God, ministering to our hearts the truth of your word that brings life to our, to our hearts, that gives direction to the path that you have for us, the destiny that you have for us. Let us as men and women live this life, Lord God, that others would, would see it and be a good reference point to them, Lord God. Let us be consistent, God. Let us remain in the place that you placed us, where you called us, and where you planted us, God. Let us life be a reference point to others. To see your grace, your mercy, and your love. Bless us as we leave this place in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you tonight, folks. We'll see you.